Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to bring you an absolutely bombshell piece of news in the chess world and maybe by extension to the overall worldwide audience. Now, first of all, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm obviously on the move again. I apologize for the poor camera quality. Uh, I'm currently on vacation in Europe. I'm with my family. It's actually 11 o'clock at night and I'm recording here. Um, and if you're a first time viewer, welcome. I have a lot of chess videos normally with better setups than this, but bad setup aside, um, today, for the first time in some six to eight months, we got an update in the massive lawsuit filed by Hans Niemann versus Magnus Carlsen, Hikaru Nakamura, and Chess.com. And that lawsuit was for some hundred million dollars, and the case was dismissed. Is this the end of the story? I don't actually think so. And in this video, I'm going to take you through Day number one until today, which is some nearly one year later in 2023, it's currently June 27th, I'm going to take you through the entire storyline, what exactly the decision was, what that actually means moving forward, you name it, let's run you up to speed. And also, many of you probably got into chess during this scandal. Let me know in the comments if you did. A lot of you played, you know, Queen's, got into because of Queen's Gambit or whatever, or whatever it might be. So let's jump into this. We're going back to September 5th, 2022. Actually, we're going back to September 4th, 2022, because that's when this game happened. Hans Niemann defeated Magnus Carlsen in a game in the Sinkfield Cup in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, in, an, in a tournament where he wasn't even supposed to play. Hans Niemann was a last minute replacement to a tournament that was full, but a player couldn't make it due to some travel restrictions, visa issues. And Hans Niemann plays in this tournament and he starts red hot and he defeats Magnus Carlsen in a classical game of chess. That's fine. People have beaten Magnus Carlsen in a classical game of chess before. That became a massive talking point, uh, and that game was actually the game I'm about to show you. I apologize, I'm kind of in the way. Again, travel set up a little bit ugly. Not the most, uh, you know, not the most important thing in the world. That game was a Nimso Indian bishop to b4 was played. I'm not gonna get into the, the nitty gritty here, but basically Magnus played this variation pawn to g3, which he almost never plays, and that became a massive talking point. And then Hans grabbed a pawn early in the game, and he counterattacked. Uh, he, he attacked Magnus' center with the move c5, and he kind of uh, very early started this ridiculous sequence where he ignored the threat on his queen by counterattacking his opponent's queen, and they got into a very complicated and messy endgame. And right around here was actually when I woke up that day and I thought, oh, Magnus is just going to go to work. And then what ended up happening was Hans slowly, methodically outplayed Magnus Carlsen in an endgame. Now, you'll notice that Hans Niemann is now up upon with the black pieces. I'm, you know, my face might be covering a little bit of the screen, so you might not see that, you know, he's got a pawn right there, but I promise it's there. As you can see from the eval, you know, that sort of, uh, that sort of sustains the, uh, the evaluation as well. Uh, my point is, my friends, this is not really going to be a chess analysis video, and inaccuracies were made along the way, but overall, it was a game that was more or less smooth sailing for Hans Niemann as he took down the world champion of chess at the time and arguably the GOAT, Magnus Carlsen, in some 57 moves in an overall game that many people called not, it wasn't supposed to be that easy to beat Magnus with the black pieces, especially your very first time. So Hans beats Magnus, okay. So what? Well, then he sits down in the post-game press conference and he says, the world champion must be embarrassed to lose to an idiot like me. He says that, man. I'm not saying that here where I am right now. He said that. The very next day, Magnus Carlsen said, I've withdrawn from the tournament. I've always enjoyed playing in the St. Louis chess club and hope to be back in the future. And he tweets out a clip that says, if I speak, I am in big trouble. This when Jose Mourinho famed uh, football manager says, if I speak, I'm in big trouble. And I don't know to wish to be in big trouble. A lot of people uh, assumed and insinuated that this was essentially an allegation of cheating, an insinuation of cheating. Unfortunately, what it left the door open to was tremendous, massive speculation. Did Magnus say that he cheated in the game against Hans cheated in the game against him? Did Hans cheat in general? Did he what, Did he even insinuate cheating? Like some people were trying to argue he was unsatisfied with. Anyway, it, it, it came to light later. Um, and Magnus actually did put out a statement that said, 
this was three weeks later. At the 2022 Singfield Cup, I made the unprecedented professional decision to withdraw from the tournament after my round three game against Hans Niemann. A week later, during the Champions Chess Tour, I resigned against Hans Niemann after only playing one move. So a couple of weeks after that game on September 4th, 2022, these two played in an online tournament that they already were going to play in, and Magnus refused to play. He protested. He refused to play. I know my actions have frustrated many in the chess community. I'm frustrated. I want to play chess. I want to play chess at the highest level in the best events. And essentially, if you look down at the paragraph, it says, I believe that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted. His over-the-board progress has been unusual. Throughout our game in the Singfield Cup, I had the impression he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions while outplaying me as, uh, as the black in a way I think only a handful of players can do. This game contributed to changing my perspective. We must do something about cheating my part going forward. I don't want to play against people that have cheated repeatedly in the past because I don't know what they're capable of doing in the future um after this came out uh some week later chess.com published a 72 page report on hans Niemann and cheating in general and i have made videos about this we don't have to rehash it and chess.com themselves said Hans has not fully admitted, admitted to the extent of his cheating. Hans said in an interview at the Singfield Chess Club, he's cheated when he was 12 and 16 years old, but he's never dared to cheat over the board. He would never tarnish his name and, and do something like that. Um, and he's very apologetic. And Chess.com puts out this report that says, here is our methodology. We've caught many people in the past who are grandmasters, not just, uh, you know, we, we haven't just caught Hans. And then this. <laughs> Hans Niemann sues Magnus Carlsen for $100 million, accusing him of defamation. This is now October 2022. This is after the Chess.com report. This is after the uh, the Magnus follow-up statement. And he also sued Hikaru. Like, Hikaru was in this lawsuit as well. Um, again, like, it, it's kind of a weird situation because I was also making a lot of content at the time based on this lawsuit because it was going to bring in views. If it brings in more views, people are going to stick around and play chess. So that's a benefit for me. Like, I'm not going to BS you. I'm a chess content creator. Is it in my best interest that people are interested in the game of chess, which is what I make content on? Yes. I've said this many, many times. But what I refuse to do in my content is I refuse to kind of like angle it toward one person or another. I try to stay on the side of, I can see it from Magnus's perspective. I can see it from uh, the perspective of Hans Niemann because... Like I kept saying in my videos, if God forbid this man cheated online as a teenager but has truly never cheated over the board, this is horrible for his reputation, this is horrible for his career, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit more later. I mean, can you imagine being the focal point of something like this? Even you have past uh, mistakes, you've done things that some would argue should just kick you out of chess permanently. So I, I was talking about you know all, this whole thing big picture and just trying to think understand it from everybody's perspective uh hans neiman sued magnus carlson chess to come and he for 100 million dollars in october of 2022 um and um neiman wanted a federal court in missouri's eastern district uh to award him at least a million dollars in damages um there was a lot of claims in this lawsuit um that were uh interesting and fascinating to say the least um and uh, he publicly admitted he used some devices to, uh, to cheat in the past when he was 12 and 16 years old. Um, this just basically has kind of like the, uh, the recap of, every, of everything, but it does say things like uh, provides Neiman's fullest account yet about his high stakes dispute. Um, and, uh, you know, it says that best chess player in history, being notorious for the inability to cope with defeat. <laughs> it says that Magnus Carlsen uh, is in a, has an inability to cope with defeat, uh, he, that he gutlessly forfeited the game after making one move, and he said that he was going to, you know, not uh, play against Neiman, and Neiman said that um, he's been blacklisted by tournaments. Like, imagine you're a tournament organizer in the world of chess, and you have Magnus Carlsen, who is the five-time champion. Like, I don't know who would be his comparison in another sport, but like, you know, the top of the top, the mess the Ronaldo, and essentially it was a situation where he has for the for, you know for lack of a better way of phrasing it has essentially said like look i think this dude is a cheater like what are you gonna do right like if you're an organizer what do you, which one of them would you rather have play in your tournament right so this was this was uh this was sort of the argument here it's that uh you know he that he said the tournament started blacklisting him right as a result of the situation
Right. Like again, the, that, that, that was one of the, the you know, that, that was one of the things that it's ongoing. Defendants malicious defamation, unlawful collusion has by design destroyed Neiman's remarkable career in its prime and ruined his life. I got to admit, uh, Hans absolutely was like, it was and continues to be in his prime. He's like 19, 20 years old. He's 2,700. He keeps going up in ELO. Um, this was de definitely an unexpected hurdle. It's not even a hurdle. It's like a concrete wall. Um, and, um, that was sort of like, that was a lawsuit. <laughs> And it's had some updates. Um, it, you know, uh, it was like dismissed in some areas, and then it was uh, not dismissed. It had to be amended in some areas. Essentially, Han sued for some defamation. There was some antitrust component with Chess.com and Play Magnus, uh, and there was uh, there was a lot of moving parts. And if you like, actually went into it, there was like seventy different clauses that like cited little moments and things and in interviews. And um, today, June seventh, June twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. Um, I was scrolling Reddit chess and I saw Neiman versus Carlson case dismissed. Um, now I'm going to get back to this thread in a moment. Uh, this is the first thing that we can see. Uh, it says plaintiff, right? And um, pursuant to the memorandum, an order issued herein on this day, hereby ordered that this case is dismissed. Counts three and four are uh, dismissed with prejudice. Uh, and you cannot read because my frame is in the way. I'm going to move me. The court declines to exercise supplemental jurisdiction over the remaining courts. The remaining courts are dismissed without prejudice. Let's bring me back because I'm handsome. Um, again, apologies, travel setup. This lawyer, alleged lawyer, could just be a Redditor. Simple analysis from a lawyer. The court did not dismiss the case in its entirety, but did dismiss the antitrust claims without any opportunity to refile them as it determined that even accepting all of the allegations is true in the complaint, there was no case under that statute. Essentially, they're saying if everything that Hans Neiman claimed in the lawsuit is um, reality, it's still not antitrust. I mean, it, like, it's not an industry thing. There's Chess is a small, like we have had a massive explosion. Chess ain't like football, all right? Um, as for the defamation claims, the matter was filed in federal court. Defamation and other less exciting claims are state claims. Federal courts have jurisdiction to hear federal claims and may have jurisdiction in other instances to adjudicate state claims, e.g. the parties are in different states. There's also federal claims in the same litigation. Here, the only federal claims were dismissed, so only state claims remain. Court declined to hear the state claims. Uh, Hans is free to file a new lawsuit with those claims, but it would have to take place in a state court. Um... Do you think Magnus Yohar would make a statement? Yeah, I think Kikar already has a video up. So essentially, this dismissal, as far as I'm understanding it, is is not like as bullet. I mean, my gut instinct is defamation is still like the major discussion point as as far as like a like again, uh, I ain't uh, I am not a lawyer. Um, but that seemed to always be the biggest one, which is like, could a public insinuation slash allegation of something like this potentially remove Hans from participating in tournaments because he's not going to get invitations? And can he sue for that? And what would he sue for? And defamation is the predetermined knowledge that something is incorrect, but then saying it anyway, which I don't think applies in this case. Um... This Wall Street Journal came out, uh, article came out with this, and we're going to take a look at the chess.com one, and then we're going to summarize. You good? You still here? Terrific. Your attention span is longer than 12 minutes. Um, this was filed today. Uh, explosive battle, allegations Neiman had cheated. 20-year-old Neiman's antitrust claims against the parties were dismissed with prejudice, meaning they cannot be brought again. Uh, we are pleased the court has rejected Hans Neiman's attempt to recover an undeserved windfall in Missouri federal court. I'm assuming that means money. Neiman's attempt to chill speech through strategic lit litigation that form has failed, said Craig Reiser, a partner in accent attorney for Carlson. Um, attorneys for Neiman, Terrence Owen, and Darren Owen said they intend to pursue the defamation claim in state court. There you go. All right. So, again, that's the big question. Um, I, I don't really think it's defamation. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I don't even know how you would argue for something less, like lost wages. The trickiest thing about this entire thing is like, n nobody actually, like I keep saying this in every interview I give, nobody knows if Hans Niemann actually cheated except Hans Niemann. That's like the weirdest thing about this thing, right? Because the only way to physically prove somebody is cheating at chess is to somehow catch them actually physically cheating at chess. You can go to the toilet and be on your phone, right? That's one way. You can have accomplices, that's provable. But if a person is just having spectacular results, isn't going to the toilet, is just sitting directly in front of you, and yes, has a device on them or not, right? And if he's not, 
Like, again, th there are only two realities. He's cheating or he's not cheating, right? <laughs> That's it. Both of them are very trippy. Both of them are very uncomfortable to think about because if he is cheating, what the hell, man? If he's not cheating, what the hell, man? Just in completely different ways, right? Just in completely different ways. I mean, we, we, th 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 both of them are like Black Mirror episodes. Like, it's just, they just don't make any sense. There's so many things in both, in both of those realities that simply do not make any sense. The, the people that have messed up and said things um, and, and so on and so forth. So just a, just a really, really weird situation. Um, and uh, this was an international spotlight. And I'm sure those of you who have watched this entire video up until this point probably are, are thinking of... Um, beads that get inserted into a certain area um again another fallout of this was uh was hans neiman uh in some reddit copy pasta essentially uh somebody said that you know you could cheat with vibrating device uh, with a vibrating device uh, in your anus and this became a worldwide sensation it was tweeted by elon musk who then went on to delete the tweet then this was picked up by literally every international news publication that i am that i can see which was like 10 um, I was asked about it in like every chess interview that I gave to, uh, to I think to Wired, I think to some others. And um, I mean, this thing just spread like wildfire. Um, and um, this was the statement. This is all summaries. And essentially, this is a, th th this is a summary of, of what's going on. Neiman responded by filing a lawsuit. Um, uh, created a monopoly in elite chess competition and defamed him with the cheating allegation. At one point, the case even cited a meme from an Avengers movie tweeted by Play Magnus as evidence. Yes, uh, the uh, Neiman legal team was tweeting out, well, was attaching to their case like various tweets uh, where people make jokes about beads. And listen, like in a world where the man actually didn't cheat, I can kind of see why you would do that. Does that make sense? Like imagine he didn't actually cheat. Like the, it's not a good thing that these memes are spreading out there. It's not, but the truth is nobody actually knows, which is what makes this case just so weird and so fascinating and why I have avoided answering people's questions. Like, do you think he cheated? I got no idea if he cheated or not. All I know is we are living in one of the two, two, two types of worlds where it either is or it isn't. and right? That's it. Um, Neiman has played some chess. He's gone up, he's gone down. He's maintaining a 2700 ELO. What does that mean? Um, and, uh, right. I mean, this is essentially a summary and then chess.com put this out. Uh, Eric and Danny from chess.com said, we're glad to see this ruling. We thought it was a meritless lawsuit that burned a lot of time and money, but we have a stewardship to protect the game. We appreciate our amazing legal team for their diligence and commitment to the cause. Where do we go from here? We remain 100% focused on what we've always been doing, growing the game and serving the community. Uh, this was a tweet that chess.com put out. And then a little bit after that, somebody responded to that tweet and said, uh, you, you are not stewards of the game of chess. The game of chess has existed long before you existed and will proceed to exist much longer than you. You are just a profit making mech. It was like a, it was a really me like just mad tweet. Like I feel like that person has a splinter or like maybe recently went underwent a root canal or I don't know, a colonoscopy or both like at the same time, maybe. I don't know, that person seemed very unhappy, but it was a good statement. Look, and um, I, I, I look, I, I think it's time to put a bow on this. Uh, until the lawsuit of defamation is filed in a state court, which is also a very fascinating one because where would they file the lawsuit of the defamation? Would they say that it occurred in the state? Like wherever the tweet went out? Would that be it? Was that where the tweet was sent? Because like Hikaru lives in Florida, if I'm not mistaken. Magnus lives in Norway. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know where Hans lives nowadays. Would it be in Missouri? I, that, that's another thing. And now, I, do I expect that to happen? Most likely. Because I think if that wasn't thrown out, that's still kind of like the big fish to catch. Um, I, it, it, it's To me, it's not really a case of defamation. But it is a very weird case. It is a very weird case. And I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with, with either of the situations, with, with either the cheating being legitimate or the cheating being completely incorrect and it not happening. And the truth is, we will never know if that happened. We will never know if it didn't happen. Will I continue making videos about it when we get updates? Yes. Yes, I will. And you are not a rocket scientist in figuring out that I will be making update videos on this because of two reasons. 
Number one, as I've said, I'm not going to BS you. I am a chess content creator. If you would ask me if I would have 600,000 people watch a video about chess or a million people watch a video about chess, assuming I'm not you know, shoving the chess pieces far up my nose or other places, um, then I would choose the million. Um, but another reason is like, I, I, I would like to think, and if you are still watching this video, feel free to drop a, your, a thought in the comments. Um, I would like to think I am the biggest individual spokesperson for chess in the world. Meaning if I talk about chess or if any individual talks about chess, perhaps they can reach, uh, they, you know, the, one of the largest audience they could reach perhaps is myself. Vishy Anand in India, India, you guys kind of win. You have like over a billion people there, like but I don't know if that many people are going to listen, but on YouTube in, in, in particular, and I think I've been pretty level-headed about this whole thing. I think I've done a pretty good job summarizing it and I make videos for you about it, even though it's like 1130 at night here in the mountains of a remote region of Europe. So that's all. That's all the Hans Demon lawsuit dismissed, no antitrust. Uh, and uh, we're going to see if the defamation in state court becomes a thing. If that attorney team is working hard, they probably already have a case prepared because they had a feeling it was going to get dismissed in federal, but we're about to find out. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.